Today's immigration protests. We begin with reports from NewsHour correspondents Jeffrey Kay of KCET Los Angeles, Rich Samuels of WTTW Chicago, and Kwame Holman in Washington, D.C. California is first. Walking away from their jobs and classrooms, thousands of people, many waving American flags, gathered on the streets of Los Angeles today. Among them, hotel worker Victoria Vergara. We are not criminals. We are workers. We contribute to this country, and it's only fair that they legalize those who don't have documents. Vergara and other demonstrators were galvanized by proposed federal legislation that would make illegal immigration a crime. By withholding their labor and their buying power, protesters hope to showcase the economic clout of illegal immigrants who comprise an estimated 15% of the L.A. labor force. The first economic effects of the May Day boycott were seen early this morning in downtown Los Angeles. A wholesale produce market, normally bustling with activity, was all but deserted. Stalls were closed and trucks were at a standstill. Have you ever seen it like this? No, never. Not even on Sundays. Merchant Ruben Calderon, himself an immigrant from Mexico, gave his five workers the day off. He says he'll lose as much as $4,000 in sales, but he says it's for a good cause. It's a lot of hard times for the immigrants right now, and I think it's the right time to, you know, let them talk, you know, let them notice that they're here, and they're here for good, because they're hardworking people, so I think they, they need, you know, some kind of a legal status to be here. Early morning commuters into downtown Los Angeles found light traffic today. Normally crowded buses were nearly empty. Businesses weren't the only places affected by the boycott. Outside Belmont High School, which is 91% Latino, junior Cynthia Contreras urged students to demonstrate. She said many kids here illegally won't be able to get a higher education. Most students immigrated when they were very small with their family. They didn't choose to come here, but unfortunately they can't continue their education just because they don't have the legal status. A key architect of today's protest was immigrant rights activist Nativo Lopez. He says a boycott is the most potent way to show America's reliance on undocumented immigrants. If people just stop and reflect, okay, change your own children's diapers, mow your own lawn, fix your own car, program your own computer, change the diapers of your elders that are in convalescent homes, do all the other grimy, dirty, uh, stoop, difficult labor that immigrants do, and then truly you'll appreciate their tremendous value to society and reward them with legalizing their status. It was a message that resonated even with those who constantly struggle to find work. Last week, these day laborers in Hollywood said they would honor today's work stoppage. If we've crossed the border, crossed the deserts, risking our lives to get here, why not give up a day of work for something that can help us all? Many merchants in Latino immigrant communities also joined the boycott by shuttering their businesses, but not all merchants embraced the boycott idea enthusiastically. Fred Adibi, who's an immigrant from Iran, said last week he was afraid that if he kept his appliance store open, it would anger his Latino customers and neighbors. I'm making money out of them. They're spending money. So I'm supporting them. Even within the immigrant rights community, the boycott has had its skeptics and critics. Some activists feared immigrants might be fired if they participated in a boycott. If they feel that their job is in danger, we feel that that's it. they don't need to risk their job on this day. Angelica Salas supports the cause, but not the boycott. So the organization she directs, the Coalition for Humane Immigrant Rights of Los Angeles, helped plan an alternative to this boycott march, a separate late afternoon demonstration for after school and after work. When you're actually threatening somebody's um, uh, daily uh, bread, when, when you're actually uh, threatening somebody's uh, wages, you better be very serious about why you're calling um, that, um, that action, that boycott. To accommodate protesters, officials closed streets in downtown Los Angeles, 
and the federal courts shut down for the afternoon in anticipation of expected traffic snarls. Demonstrations that began midday in Los Angeles rolled into the evening as they did throughout Southern California. It was demonstrators as far as the eye could see at the staging area for Chicago's march. Chicago was where the idea for a nationwide demonstration originated. It was the brainchild of Jose Artemio Areola, a service workers union that official. Decided. We need it. We need it. Uh, in immigration reform. He proposed a rally that was held here in March. Latino radio personalities like Javier Salas provided publicity that led to a turnout of at least 100,000 then. Today, he had to overcome what he claimed was a negative image projected by some sectors of the Anglo media. We're not burning flags. We're not singing anthems in, in bilingual. We're not offending this country. We all want is to share the American dream, as cliche as it sounds. We just want to have the opportunity to provide for our families. Between 300,000 and 500,000 marchers turned out here today. Organized labor had a considerable presence here. Tony Avalos, a Teamster organizer, believes managers agree with workers on the immigration issue. They're very supportive because uh, they're not afraid uh, uh, of the walkout or not being here. They want us to come back to work. They want us to be legal. They want us. To, uh, they want to give us the things that everybody else has. Joining the Chicago marchers today with some misgivings was Carmen Velasquez. She's a healthcare professional. Many of her clients are immigrants without documentation. You have to be have the courage to call attention to your issue. Whether it's the best way to do it, I'm not quite sure. But I do know this: that unless we do something that demonstrates to the entire country that this is still America, that we have the right to voice our concern and our issues and bring it out in the open. And we are not afraid to talk about this issue. And this country has to stop being afraid uh, to talk about it only because we have come out and said, deal with us. We're not going to erase you, you. You cannot erase us from the blackboard. Among the elected officials addressing the marchers was U.S. Senator Barack Obama. You know, I am proud of the fact that a national movement began in Chicago because Chicago has always been ahead of the curve. And what started out as a march born of fear, fear of a house bill that would criminalize and create felons out of hardworking families who are simply trying to raise their children as best they can, has now become a movement of hope. But not all Chicago's African Americans agreed with Senator Obama today. Talk show host Cliff Kelly fielded a call this morning he says was not unique. But they're here illegally. Mm -hmm. And if they broke the law, then they should be sent back as many as can. Talk show host Kelly says jobs are the issue for this and other like minded callers. He mentioned the fact of how many African Americans are out of work. That's what's behind it sheer economics. People need jobs you know notwithstanding all this we hear about oh the economy this that and the other that's a bunch of crap as i say drive through my community and you see all these people on the street at noon they are looking for work while chicago's was by far the largest pro-immigration rally in illinois a handful of other demonstrations were held throughout the state it looked like business as usual in the nation's capital today. There were taxi cabs aplenty. The clang from construction sites echoed through the streets. And daily life for most went undisturbed as many immigrants showed up for their jobs or gave advance warning they'd be gone. In some of Washington's Latino neighborhoods, such as Mount Pleasant, several businesses were closed in observance of the boycott. But feelings remained mixed, especially in Carlos West's apparel store, which he kept open. I'm a supporter. I, I, I support, but then again, everyone's got to pay rent. You know, everyone's got to pay the bills, you know. In one day, we had to be together, to work together, but let, let they, they know what we are strong in this country and we pay taxes like them, like everybody else. A few blocks away, a popular Mexican restaurant did its usual Monday lunchtime business. Many of L'Oreal Plaza's 300 seats were filled.
co-owners Luis Reyes and Raul Sanchez talked to their employees last week and decided shutting down today wasn't the best way to support immigrants' rights. I don't think we'll help uh, the, uh, get uh, attention with the boycott. I think we'll, we'll look bad for, for us. The owners, as well as most of the staff, were born outside the U.S. Everybody knows uh, that uh, immigrants are useful and, 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 and is, is needed here. Uh, we, we've been needed. And um, uh, tell everybody don't go to work. Uh, it's not going to help. Uh, we're going to dis disrupt the economy uh, to show what? Uh, what are we going to show? Another usually bustling lunchtime spot, Chef Jeff's, also kept its doors open for most of the day. This country is founded on, on immigration. That was a collective uh, decision, believe, according to uh, owner Jeff Tracy, uh, who convinced his uh, team that closing would hurt everyone. We're a profit-sharing uh, company. We, I, I, at the end of the year, um, I give back a large percentage of the profits to all my employees. Um, they all know that. <laughs> um, and. And, 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 and so, so we talked about that. $30,000 worth of revenue that just disappears, you know, that's just gone. It's essentially a profit that's just gone. And, you know, they kind of balanced that out. And they said, well, you know, maybe that's not a good thing for the, for the restaurant. Tracy acknowledged his restaurant business depends heavily on an immigrant workforce. And he's not alone. About 45% of Washington, D.C. area food service workers are immigrants, not all illegal, according to the Pew Hispanic Center. So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of labor involved, um, and a lot of that comes from the Latino community. And if they all get together and say, hey, you know, we're not going to work today, well, if the produce doesn't arrive, um, there won't be many Caesar salads that day. Around the corner, the management of Finimundo closed the restaurant in solidarity with its employees, most of whom are immigrants. Manager David Burkhardt said that meant a hit to the bottom line. How much money are you going to stand if it's closing down on Monday? Anywhere between five to twelve thousand dollars. But next door, the high noon deli struggled to deal with the lunchtime crowd when half its workers chose to boycott. Manager Stella Dumka expected that and planned ahead. We're going to be very frazzled all day, and we're going to just keep going and do the best we can, and that's all you can do. Many immigrants and their supporters who chose not to work came together this afternoon for a rally in the city's most prominent Latino neighborhood. That wasn't a concern for Roxana Rivas. Owners of the nearby store where she works chose to close for the day. Where I work, it's a Hispanic business and all my bosses support us. They know we are dignified people and they understand we need to one day legalize and get papers. Though much smaller than last month's pro-immigration rally on the National Mall, today's action in Washington pleased organizers. They said the so-called sleeping giant of immigrants has been awakened and promised to continue the push for legal status for America's millions of undocumented people. I'm Bob Schieffer. They left.